Hello everyone and welcome to another reaction video. This one is a crap guide to D&D part 3. Um, now before I get into the reaction I just want to say that I'm going to be moving very soon at the time of recording this like two days so if there ain't any videos then you know why I was busy doing that anyway that out of the way we're gonna be reacting to the warlock so yeah without further ado let's do this Hey you, yeah you sitting there with your saggy butt cheeks and emotionless expression. I know what you're thinking. Boy, I wish I could cast spells, but all I got is an expendable firstborn child and a willingness to work under a questionably immoral arcane master till the end of time. Well, that's just the exact sort of motivation we like for our employees at EDB <laughs> Incorporated. And if you sign up with us, we'll be sure you're treated in a way that you deserve for assisting in furthering our goals to bring about the ruin of the entire multiverse. All I huh. need you to do is sign here and agree to give us the but on the bright side, we have dental. Welcome to a crap guide to D and D. <laughs> so you want to use magic, but only as much as you want to hug that one family member you keep seeing at reunions, but aren't quite sure how you're related. Then you <laughs> may want to be a warlock, the fake gamers of the Forgotten Realms. How warlocks differ from the other casters is that the amount of times you can cast your spells before running out of spell slots is absolute shit. Instead of having a set number yeah. of spells for each level of spell slot, you get a maximum of four spell slots for all your spells up to fifth level, and that's it. And a few other ones, but nobody cares about those. The flip side is that the spells you cast are always at their max level, and instead of having to take a long rest to get those slots back, all you need is an hour to have a wank, have a biscuit, and you're back on your feet. But you know what? Fuck <laughs> real spells. You may think you're a caster, but really, picking this class is purely an excuse to do nothing but cast everyone's favorite cantrip, Eldritch. <laughs> cast it at weddings, funerals, <laughs> beach parties, or you can just cast it randomly because the party's taking five hours to buy a single dagger from the shopkeeper and you're bored. <laughs> Aside from casting nothing but Eldritch all day, the main draw of the Warlock is the fact that it's the greatest game of dress-up dolls of all time. Eldritch invocations allow you to custom tailor your Warlock so that it suits you better than my form-fit here and assless chaps. You can talk to <laughs> animals without needing to cast a spell, go straight up invisible whenever you want, but most importantly, there are invocations that allow you to customize your Eldritch so that whenever you shoot your gobbledygook at whatever poor sap that looked at you funny, you can pull them forward and do your best scorpion impression, snipe them from two blocks away, or make the beam of arcane destruction smell like strawberries if you like. But it's not hmm. all fun and eldritch because remember, you've signed a pact with a patron, so your power is being loaned to you from an all-powerful arcane sugar daddy. So you will have to pay interest if you want to make sure all that magic stays nicely tucked into your eldritch sack. Hmm. Luckily, they're not like bank loans because you can actually pay them off and they're not always inherently evil. You have the choice hmm. of being bossed around by a literal devil who decided to make you their favorite person, so they're gonna be your mommy for a little bit. A skeleton who ironically refuses to let you die because you still owe him two platinum. Fairies who are just straight up assholes. God, so you're basically a cleric now. Literally Cthulhu. But forget all those because the only real option is to have your patron be a magically possessed sentient sword and shield that yells fuck when you swing it. Basically you have such a huge amount of options to choose from with how you build your warlock. It's very unlikely any two warlocks will be the same. So get your shopping baskets, light some candles, have fun customizing. Oh, and remember you have to sacrifice three more babies by the end of the week or you're fired! And now you know how to play warlock. You're <laughs> That's great. Impressive. Hang, hang on. Wizard. Nice. Anyway, we're reacting to the wizard now. So, yeah. Impressive. You know, I mean, I've never had a student score zero in everything before. <laughs> what do you mean? I chose exactly the perfect spell for every situation. Well, you answered fireball for every question. <laughs> What's your point, person within fireball distance? What I mean <laughs> is you can't expect a big damaging area of effect spell to be the answer for everything. Maybe try some different spells, maybe minor illusion to trick the enemy. You can find a fey or a fiend to serve as your familiar or even prestidigitation. It has a surprising amount of uses, even though it costs nothing. I'm about to prestidigitate all over your desk if you keep suggesting <laughs> most spells. What I'm saying is you should expand your horizons. A wizard is the apex of the arcane, the ultimate utility caster, and one of these days you're going to find yourself in an encounter where fireball isn't going to... Where'd he go? What the fuck? Welcome to a crap guy to D&D! <laughs> Cl 
classic, the OG, the frail old man with a stick that shoots magic missiles at a few goblins and then has to go door to door telling his neighbors he's a registered hex offender. The wizard is the hmm. most powerful class if you ignore any other classes that are stronger, which are all of them, because this thing is more fragile than a single layered sheet of toilet paper that's been soaking in the soggy crack of the bridge troll's ass cheeks. This hmm. class is the sorcerer's lamer, more studious, dorky <laughs> neighbor who does all the hard work for none of the recognition. You get saving throws and intelligence and wisdom instead of constitution and charisma, so sure you'll be able to ace that pop quiz and not have to worry about being distracted, but you won't be able to hold your liquor or score any hot dates at Chad Firebolt's party in the Golden Mansion his chromatic dragon dad bought him. If you're looking <laughs> for the silver lining, the wizard is definitely the heaviest case of be careful who you call ugly in magic school. The wizard's spell list is thicker than the Storm King's thunder thighs, who gains spell slots like a shower drain gets hair, and during a short rest you can even choose a small amount of spell slots to recover depending on your level. Best of all, at higher levels you even get the ability to cast your favorite low level spells as many times as you like. But who are we <laughs> kidding? You're likely going to be dead before you reach that high, either killed by your own fireballs or killed by all your pissed off allies who were caught in your own fireballs. But hold your horses <laughs> there, Mr. I actually believe wizard means are as funny in the game as they are on social media. All your spells are tied to your spellbook because wizards have short term memory loss, and unless it's a cantrip, you can only cast a spell if you have a three step tutorial with pictures to color. But the work <laughs> doesn't just stop there. The stronger spells at higher levels are going to need expensive magical components to cast them if you don't want to embarrass yourself with arcane owl dysfunction and suddenly your finger of death feels more like a finger of mild discomfort. People <laughs> say wizards are the utility casters because of the massive amount of spells at their disposal, many of which are apparently great for a wide range of situations. I'm here to smartly inform you that those people are stupid. Use fireball and only <laughs> fireball. Nothing but fireball. Just fireball. Just fireball. Just fireball. Because they are <laughs> the nerds of D&D, wizards have an unhealthy amount of knowledge of all of the different schools of magic. So instead of having their archetypes based around a certain theme, they get one for each of the aforementioned schools of magic, which is too damn many to go over, and frankly, I don't have the time or gummy bears to last a whole lecture. Instead, I'm going to quickly summarize each school of magic, and also war magic, because fuck you, and I'm gonna do it all in song! <laughs> Evocation elements to burn or shock or freeze your friends Necromancy spares the dying or you could just resurrect them Abjuration keeps you safe and almost makes your armor fair Divination helps you sense detect commune and talk to bears Conjuration portals and makes stuff for free Transmutation turn things into other things With enchantment fuck the buffer in between And delusion visual tricks to prank the brain With fear and silence blur and go invisible Pretend you're someone else's dad disguise Misty take on their life War magic is like tank mage getting lots of defense Flexing as you cast <laughs> And now you know how to play wizard you're welcome. Nice. Nice. Anyway. <clears throat> ah. All right. So. I'm gonna skip over the like theme song for this because yeah if you want to listen to it go check out Joe Cat and his stuff also yeah again I forgot to tell you that this series isn't really made for kids so yeah anyway now we're gonna be reacting to I think the most recent class, the Artificer. So yeah. A wise man once said magic is dumb and stupid and makes no sense, and I trust that man. He wields a sword and a shield, so mm. why use magic when you can use big brain energy and the power of science? And I know how much nerds love science, so much that they won't shut up about it and one day start making weird advances towards their Texas instrument. Listen, we all have our urges, but seriously, get a server room. Welcome <laughs> to a crap guy to D&D. It's about damn time we got another intelligence caster. The stat is about as commonly used for spell casting as your bedroom is used for sexy times. The artificer is an <laughs> inventor who decided traditional magical means by accomplished wizards and scholars are too mainstream and decided to come up with their own magic spells and items after reading two articles by angry moms from Baldur's Gate who discovered casting real spells can actually give you genital flumps. Checkmate <laughs> sorcerers. Instead of that, you can tinker with items to imbue them with special properties like turning it into a flashlight, turning it into a scented candle, or turning it into a phone that can only record and play vines. The best <laughs> part is that once you give the item the properties, it lasts forever so go have fun enjoying your seven seconds of fame before the service shuts down and you become a struggling vlogger and speaking of messing with the natural <laughs> properties of items as you level up you gain infusions which allow you to turn that sex toy you hide in the dresser from a basic vibrator to a vibrator infusions include but are not limited to boring stat increase thor's hammer item dupe glitch and go go gadget blink a boo this is all due to your <laughs> massive iq rating of 20 billion which is so high you can add your intelligence modifier to any of you or your ally party members dice rolls and become the ultimate backseat gamer telling them about the bad guy's weak spots because there's no way they're simple 
minds could have figured it out on their own. And if that doesn't work out, you can use one of the 50 magical items you've made yourself and refuse to part with like someone on an episode of Hoarders, or pull a fast okay. one and throw the magical vibrator that you secretly stored a charge of fireball in. Being the new class that it is, the Artificer only has three subclasses so far, and no, I'm not going to cover the new ones that come out. Stop asking, I just want to go on vacation with my sword and shield already. Okay. The Alchemist is like a drunk doctor and gains a few healing spells, can buff allies with the power of drinking and gambling, and can help you grow closer bonds with your pets. If you want a big hmm. fuck off gun, the Artillerist can create an Eldritch Cannon that can either fire three different kinds of artillery or just sit there contributing nothing while you marvel at your amazing craftsmanship because keeping track of more than one thing on the board is hard isn't that right dungeon master and lastly the battlesmith where mm. you decide to stop being a puss baby and join the fight with a mystery solving robo dog sidekick <laughs> a ranger overall the <laughs> artificer loves making finding and using loads and loads of magical items which means you'll probably forget about half of your inventions because players can't be trusted to even remember the items they started with at the beginning of the campaign just make sure to keep them under good security so the rogue doesn't steal them all while you're long rest and suddenly you wake up to the sound of tchaikovsky's 1812 overture now you know <laughs> how to play artificer you're welcome yeah all right so i have actually made an artificer character and yes i'm gonna do a video about it then in the future anyway so yeah, now we're going to be reacting to races. So, yeah. So you picked your class, hold on to your ass, it's gonna get crass cause race is part of the role you can play. Some sentient clay, a he she or they, a beast who gets real snarly, a regular dude named Charlie. If homebrew is free, a big talking tree, welcome to a crap guide to D&D. Arakakra, big fucking bird, you got some wings so you can fly, and if non-weapon melees prefer, they get sharp talents to bit scratch a guy. Or maybe you're more of an Asimar, still avian, if you lower the bar, angelic people with radiant energy, or darkness if you flap your wings edgily. Bugbears aren't actually bears at all, more like beastly orcs and just as tall, but oddly sneaky and your arms are long, so you're really freaking good at playing basketball. But if going full beast is a little too far, you could always do half and decide to be a centaur, charging the enemy so they can readily get steadily back up while you're stomping them deadly. For sneaky bunch, changeling's cool, you make a disguise guys get a worthless tool you can change your face to whatever race there's nearly no limit who you can fool dragonborn no not the skyrim kind are likely the kid of a bard that'll find dragons really hot so now you shoot acid or whatever other color your parents preferred acid the typical dwarf with a beautiful beard you work with your hands and are physically sturdy you seem informed about rocks which is weird try not to obsess or the sesh will get wordy elves are papa's pricks a dozen flavors to match and mix they live a long time don't sleep in said trance and are hard to be charmed so bards keep it in your pants pick a fear bulk a chill ass cow most of which have a druidic vow and don't ask how but they can turn invisible, which is a big concern. Janassi, elemental genie bastards, one of four elements that they have mastered in some way, lets them do cool shit like water bend or have a fire breathing armpit. Githyanki and Githzerai, elves that look like they wanna die, all they're about is how they clash. Been around 40 years and their lore still trash. Short stack, 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 Gnome, stack, happy stack. short folk who are smart and wise and cunning and know how to crack. crack, crack in the good crack, camouflage, crack. be it sneaking or magic or cool roguish montage. Whack, whack, whack is the whack, goblin, whack. small size hits hard on your noggin. Their nimbleness makes it hard to keep pace, they'll hide and bide quick slide and hit your face. Muscles are in, though I have bias, so the hottest IMO is Goliath. They're eight feet tall, have steel for their balls, and can shrug off damage like one man riots. Half elves, the mutts and mules of D&D. Extra points to spend on two abilities and skills out the ass. It's the best of both races, and backstories usually come from stupid places. Half orc, like I said, muscles are in. You're a ruthless brute who fights to win. Your crits get crits, and you can terrify. And if you feel like it, you can say no when you die. If your luck is nasty, the half wing's good. You reroll ones and win like you should, and you're hard to scare, so go party with a dragon, and you can slip through if it's angry off the flagon. Humans get a little bit of everything. They lack gimmicks or special Ooh. flair or anything and are all around average. You know how it is and the perfect pick if you're boring. Races, all the races. Races, all the races. There's plenty to choose from, too many. So come witness the list of this guy to all of the Goblin. 
They trust in a code, be it God or communism or giant toad, they're a prideful chode. So whenever you fail, the more watch you retry means you go beast mode. If you're an edgy avian, kenku sneaky, agile and crafty and can easily lie. They can mimic voices to be a bit cheeky, too bad they get bullied because they can't fly. The cobalt is a mischievous one, they hate bright light and there's often more than one. They can trick dumb fools and steal their jewels, but ganging up together can be pretty fun. Guess it's scaly hours, cause lizard folk have sticks up their ass and can't take a joke. They can bite and craft and stay a while underwater and have hard ass scales to block cannon fodder. Loxidon are straight up elephants, they're large size and take and make them dense. Got trunks to smell and are wise and mostly merry, but piss one off and you'll see they're damn scary. Wanna breathe underwater? Lokata is a fish. A straight up fish. Literally, just a fish. Your armor starts high and get tons of resistance. Stay dry and you die. You're still just a fish. Big beastly bull is a minotaur. Got horns to charge. If you run pretty far, make them shit their pants while you're at it. Being big and scary is a habit. Speaking of orcs, superstitious and strong, but also often wrong with a minus two to int. That's okay, so to say you're aggressive and massive. Got angry parents means they're rarely passive. Cat girls rejoice. Tabaxi is here. Obsessed with stuff and quite the sightseer. Fast like a cat. Get claws and climb Far. Tons of coats like leopard, tiger, and jaguar. Tieflings a demon with a lot of looks. They're horny and hot and often a provoker in the lore anyway. A lot of hate. It's normal, I guess, when you're a panty soaker. If you want to be a big reptilian who's strong and hardy, then Tortle has a shell that's AC's a million. So have fun being a hermit immortal. Triton is just an aquatic elf who evolved itself in the continental shelf. And you're basically Aquaman. Fish can understand you. No, they won't do your laundry just because you demand to. The burden, like a goblin, but pretentious. Mind powers that make mystics contentious. Bunch of passive shit. What is this? Peace hour? Come back and talk to me when you learn real power. You want tea pure blood like humans, but snaky. Never make a date with one, I hear they're flaky. Manipulate a bunch with magic resistance. Don't take their oral offer, no matter the persistence. Fair human mix is the Kalashtar. Got a lot of mind shit that's really bizarre, like telepathy. Dream protectively, like angels if they couldn't be effectively. The shifters, like a half lycanthrope, with four different types with exclusive features. You can't transform, at least not fully, so you often look more like a freakish creature. Simic hybrids are a random fusion of aquatic things, like a squid or a crab. Gain bonuses, depending which one, so have some big pincers for new ways to stab. Warforge, robots, forge for war, don't have to eat or sleep or breathe and what's more is your tanky as well being hard to steal the only downside is you'll never truly feel the dalkin tells us nobody's perfect look like knobby people without the long neck they get lots of bonuses to smarts not shocking good luck ever getting one to stop talking and that's the lot and always remember class race importance is pretty seldom use whatever you fancy make a chubby fighter dancing now you know how to pick your race you're welcome races. Amazing. Anyway, so yeah, that's all the races. The D&D. &D. Anyway. So, yeah. Anyway. So, the final video is goblins. So, yeah. Let's get into it. What's wrong, you pathetic, sad, procrastinating dungeon master? Can't come up with a worthwhile and interesting combat encounter and you only have half an hour before the session because you spent the last week fascinating about a totally different campaign you wish to run one day but ultimately know you never will because you're in a constant state of prep work and insecurity? That's okay, everybody knows no matter how basic the combat is, it's going to take forever anyway thanks to any spellcasters and people on their phones and is mostly just a chance for the DM to stall for time while they figure out <laughs> the next story beats. That and an excuse to show off whatever art of the thing the players are fighting that the DM paid three grand in commissions or miniatures to make for them or you could just grab whatever the next thing on your shelf is and say fuck it we're fighting this little bastard today welcome to a crap guy to D&D &D. Goblins are one of the most iconic creatures in Dungeons and Dragons, famous everywhere. for being low and mid-level cannon fodder, having the respawn rate of a seahorse playing Call of Duty, and being overall superior to kobolds in every way. Goblins are what you default to when you have no idea what the party should be fighting, because they're just <laughs> so splattered all over the realm that everyone just accepts that they can show up anywhere. All right, got myself some More live action. cookies for some hunts, and we'll open the fridge and get the milk back where it went. God, Jesus, what the fuck? Goblins were originally created by the hobgoblins, who one day got really lazy and decided to make a generation of poor saps that they could shove all their baggage onto and then blame for when the economy they don't have a say in gets destroyed. <laughs> this has sort of evolved into how goblins mostly live in tribes where the biggest asshole is the leader and everybody else is just sort of used to being Fireball. treated as poorly as a retail worker. That's not to say all goblins are meek little green muppets. Given enough size and numbers and time to prepare an ambush and even the most basic goblin squads can turn an 8th level party into the aftermath of eating at White Castle. 
This hmm. is because goblins are a culture constantly raiding like they're trying to get world first and have a knack for throwing themselves at the first thing they see that looks like they could hmm. potentially bite its ear off. They're also somewhat smart. Leaders of goblin it's tribes consistently brain. placing first in tournaments of Connect 4, and the race as a whole frequently mounting and fighting alongside creatures such as wards, which are oversized wolves that are perpetually angry as people keep stealing their art off Instagram. If you ever decide to play as a goblin, you'll receive a little bit of dex and con from being agile and resilient little hmm. gremlins and the ability to quickly pussy out of combat like you're hmm. at a friend's house and the parents started arguing. And Fury of the Small, where you get to punch below the belt and make the enemy's <laughs> voice go up as many octaves as your player level. Now that's the general idea of what goblins are supposed to be in the Forgotten Realms, but this is D&D, which means everybody breaks the rules more than an episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! And the <laughs> fact that goblins are so adaptable to so many situations and environments means that there's no limit to how they can be portrayed or what they can be used for. You can make them mindless monsters that fill the last few empty rooms of a dungeon, or adorable little scamps that the party will adopt the instant they see them, or design them so unexpectedly attractive that it'll make people question if they discovered a new fetish, or if it was there all along and this was just its awakening. You too can throw hmm. an endless supply of XP at your party while giving them conflicting feelings on stomping on an innocent little cutie pie that was just minding its own business and just wanted a little bit of love. Isn't that right, you sweetie petite? Ow, son of a bitch! And now you know how to use goblins. Booyag! Are you speaking from experience, Joe Cat? Did that happen to you? I have a sneaking suspicion that it did. Anyway. Uh, yeah. That's gonna be the end of this reaction video. And if you enjoyed this, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Notifications, all that. Go check out Joe Cat and the series and other videos he makes and yeah uh, next time we're doing barbarian again and yeah anyway so yeah I'll remind you again that there may not be too many videos coming out recently cause yeah moving Anyway, though, other than that, I have nothing else to say. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.